Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Faith Friday video. In today's video, we are going over Ephesians chapter 6, but with a twist. So if you're interested in seeing that, then keep on watching. Alright guys, so first I want to start this video off by just apologizing. I know I said I was going to be more consistent on my channel, but things have just been crazy. Um, and honestly, my mind has just been all over the place with this virus and stuff like that. And so I wanted to apologize that I'm getting this video out to you guys so late. Um, but I also think that it is all a part of God's timing. Um, and I believe that the word from Ephesians chapter 6 is very uh, timely for what we are going through right now. Um, so usually if you're new around here, usually I'll read the whole chapter and I'll go through it verse by verse and share any revelations or teaching that the Lord gave, with, gave to me. But this time I want to highlight a specific part of Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, um, from, from about verses 10 to 18, it talks about our battle against evil um, and how we can defend or attack evil. And so that's really what I want the focus of this video to be. So I'm still going to read these uh, eight, nine verses. Um... And then we're just going to dive straight into this. Um, of course, please read the whole chapter um, and study that on your own time. Um, but yeah, I just want to focus strictly on Ephesians 6 uh, verses 10 through 18. So let's get right into it. So it says, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your waist girded with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit always, with all kinds of prayer and supplication. To that end, be alert with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Right? So that is Ephesians 6, chapter 10 through 18. And so just for a little uh, background, this book was written by Paul and it was written when he was in Rome. And so when we think about the armor of God, I want you to picture a Roman soldier and I might put a picture right here. Right. So this is what Paul was seeing while he was in um, Rome. And he used this image to instruct and to explain to us how we are supposed to be protected, how we are supposed to go into battle, because as believers, we are in battle. This is a war, right? And we're seeing it more than ever now that we as believers have to stand up. We as believers have to be bold. We in belie we as believers have to speak up about who God is. We have to um, share our testimony. We have to get people to be saved. People are dying. People are dying. And just a little caveat, we talk a lot about when things like this happen and when plagues and diseases come about, we talk a lot about uh, the end days and I've seen a lot of posts sending people to revelations, right? Our revelation. I've seen a lot of posts sending people to revelation and I just want to encourage us um, to not be so focused on the end days, right? Because we don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back. He could come back 10 days from now, 10 years from now, 100 years from now. He could even come back a 1,000 years from now, and none of us would be here. So instead of, this is a message to believers, instead of sending people to Revelation, send people to John 3.16. Don't have people so focused on the end days that they don't focus on their end day. Because you don't know when 
your last day will be. And so while we're getting so worked up about the end times, we need to worry about how many people are getting saved today because tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. Yes, Jesus is coming back. But there is a higher chance that we might leave this earth today or tomorrow, right? And so when we are encouraging people, I know we are um, trying to get people to understand the severity of being saved. Um, but please, please, please lead with love, lead with grace and encourage people not to be scared about the end days but to encourage people um, to accept Jesus Christ today um, because of his grace, because of his mercy, because we can find joy and comfort in situations like this. People are wondering how we cannot be afraid. Tell them it's because we serve a God who is a comforter. Tell them it is because we serve a God that is a way maker. Tell them it's because we serve a God that is a sustainer. Introduce them to that God. Introduce them to that Jesus. Introduce them he introduced them to the Jesus that came to save all of us from death, right? So I just got off on a tangent. But as Ephesians 6 is saying, we are in a war and we fight not against flesh and blood. What does that mean? It means we are not here to fight against people. There are going to be people that Satan uses. There are going to be people who come against God. There are going to be people who don't believe, but our fight is not against them as humans. Our fight is against the spirits and the powers and the principalities that are working behind them right? And so as believers, it is important that we keep our eyes focused, that we are not fighting people, but we are fighting spirits. We are fighting powers. We are fighting principalities. And so in this scripture, in this chapter, Paul gives us the armor that we are supposed to wear as believers of Christ. And that's really what I want to focus on today. So there are six um, pieces of armor that each one of us as believers needs to be wearing at all times, right? We hear it says, put on the whole armor of God. And so when you wake up, you are getting ready to go to war that day. Put on the whole armor of God. And so I'm not going to go in the uh, order that it is in the, in the word, but I'm going to go from head uh to feet right so first let's start off with the helmet of salvation the helmet of salvation so it says take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so what is a helmet right everybody knows what a helmet is it protects the head right it goes on the head but i want you to think about the helmet as the protection of the soul right and so I know we see the helmet as an image of protecting the head, but what does it mean that it protects the soul? Well, you have to know what a soul is. So our soul is made up of three different parts. Our soul is made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions. Our mind, our will, and our emotions, right? And so when you think about it like that, you understand, okay, yes, it does protect the head because it protects my mind. It protects my thoughts. It protects the way that I perceive things. It prote protects the way that I view things, right? It protects the way that I feel, right? And so the helmet is the protection of the soul. The soul is made up of three parts, your mind, will, and emotions. And it is the helmet of Salvation. What is salvation? Salvation is deliverance from sin and its consequences. So when we put on the helmet of salvation, we are saying, one, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the gospel. And because I believe in that, I now have protection that salvation is protection of my soul. That salvation is protection of my mind, of my will, and of my emotions. And so when my emotions are getting crazy and I'm being afraid, right? I'm in situations where I am feeling uneasy, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling worried. That is when I put on my helmet of salvation. I am saved. I am in the hand of God. There is nothing that can touch me. I have no reason to fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, right? 
And so you have to get up every day and put up your put on your helmet of salvation and tell yourself that there is nothing that can attack your mind. Satan is going to come after your mind. He is going to come after you with depression. He is going to come after you with anxiety. But you need to put on your helmet of salvation. It is salvation that protects your soul. Okay? So that is number one, the helmet of salvation. Number two is the breastplate of righteousness. So what is the breastplate? The breastplate, I can't even say the breastplate. The breastplate protects the upper body, right? And so when I was studying, um, it looks like the breastplate protects from about the neck to the waist, right? And so when you think about the breastplate, think about how that is protecting vital organs, right? That is protecting your heart. Your heart is literally the central, that's what's keeping you alive, right? Your heart, um, your lungs, that is what's breathing air, right? Through you. So your breastplate is protecting the body and vital organs, and it's the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God. It's correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting according to God's word, right? And so it is righteousness. It is being in right standing with God. It is um, being in alignment with the way that God thinks, um, the way that God has instructed us to act, right? That is right standing with God. Righteousness is not per being perfect, but it is being in right standing with God. It is agreeing with God when you sin. Yes, God, your word says that this is wrong. So I know that I made a mistake and I repent for that and I turn away. That is being in right standing with God. When we disagree, when we feel like we haven't done any wrong, anything wrong, when we feel no conviction, we are not in right standing with God. We are not in righteousness. We are not being righteous. And so when it says to put on your breastplate of righteousness, it means to be in right standing with God because that is what protects your heart. That is what protects the vital organs that are keeping you going spiritually and physically. Right? So first we have to put on our helmet of salvation. Secondly, we put on our breastplate of righteousness. And the third thing that we have to put on is our belt of truth, right? So what does a belt do, right? We know a belt um, is used to keep up our pants, right? With the armor, it was used to keep up the armor, but not only was it used to keep up the armor, but it was also used to hold the weapons and to hold any equipment or food that they needed while they were in battle, right? So it was to keep on their armor, but it was also to hold their equipment. So that was the belt. And so what is truth? Truth is what is true in things pertaining to God and the moral and religious duties of man, right? And so the belt of truth is used to keep our armor on. And so when you are walking in truth, when you are living in truth, and what is truth? Truth is not subjective. Truth is, this is truth. When you are a believer, this is truth. This is what you stand on. The word says that God is not a man that he should lie, right? This is truth. This is what keeps your armor on. Understanding this, understanding this, believing this, walking in this, talking this. Believing in the word of God, believing in God, knowing what is true, knowing the difference between what is true and what is not. That is what keeps the armor up, right? So we have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. And next we have shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, right? And so what is the Great Commission? Matthew 28, 19 says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is our ultimate purpose as believers. Our ultimate purpose is to go make disciples, baptizing them, and spreading the gospel, right? So what do shoes do? Shoes protect, protect our feet. And so literally Matthew 28, 19 says, go, that means to move, right? Go therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in all nations. So that means that we have to move. That means that we are instructed to go somewhere and to spread the good news, to spread the gospel of peace, right? So our shoes are what equip us to go. Our shoes are what equip us to walk in the truth. Our shoes are what equip us to share the gospel or to share the good news of Jesus Christ. 
So that is the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. And next we have the shield of faith. What is a shield? A shield is an object providing protection from blows or missiles, right? And in the word it says, put on the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the evil one. Remember, this is a battle. This is a war. Satan is going to come after you with everything he got. That is his ultimate purpose. That is all that he does. He I was about to say he wakes up. His sole purpose is to stop believers from sharing the good news, from sharing the gospel, from getting more people saved, from adding more souls to the kingdom. That is his sole mission. And he is going to do anything that it takes. And so when you understand that, when you understand that Satan is going to come at me today, Every morning when you wake up, Satan is going to come after me today because I'm a child of God and I am doing what God has called me to do. You can understand that I have to be equipped. I need to put on this armor. If I don't, Satan is going to attack me. It's not one of those things of if he is or if he isn't, right? No, the Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That is his sole mission, he does not waver from that. And so we have a problem when we have believers who are wavering and who are sometimes ready to battle and sometimes not when Satan is ready to go there at all times. So why aren't we? Right? So put on your shield of faith that will protect you um, and be able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the evil one. What is faith? Faith is belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence in God. If you do not believe in God, if you do not trust in God, if you do not have confidence in God, in who he says he is, in his word, then you do not have um, your shield of faith. It is your faith that will protect you. And so if you are getting hit from left to right, I urge you, I encourage you to check your faith, right? And then lastly, we have the sword of the spirit. And so when we look at the other five um, pieces of armor, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, and the shield of faith, those are all defensive pieces of armor, right? They all protect something. They are used to protect the body, right? The helmet of salvation is used to protect your soul. The breastplate of righteousness is used to protect your body and those vital organs that are keeping you going physically and spiritually. The belt of truth is used to keep all the armor up and to equip you, right? We are equipped with truth. The shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace are to protect your feet, um, and to help you go make disciples, go spread the gospel, right? The shield of faith is used to protect against the fiery darts and the fiery arrows of Satan. But the sword of the spirit is an offensive weapon. And so that is important to know because as believers, oftentimes we are always on the defense. We are always responding to Satan and we need to be on the offense. We need to be going after Satan. We need to be going after people. We need to be going after souls. And that is going to require us to fight. And so we have been given a weapon. We have been given the sword of the spirit. A sword is used for thrusting or striking an opponent. And I want to read Matthew 10, 34. And this is what um, Jesus says to the disciples when he sends them out um, to do what he's called them to do, right? To perform miracles, to save people. Um, so let me tell you what it says in Matthew 10, 34. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose 
will lose it and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it right and so that scripture that's really important is verse 34 where it says do not suppose that i have come to bring peace to the earth i did not come to bring peace but a sword right Jesus is saying, I did not come here to be on the defensive. I did not come here to make people feel good, right? Jesus said, I came here with a sword. I came here ready to fight. I came here ready to do what I had to do to beat Satan. I came here ready to destroy hell. I came here to destroy the bondage that Satan had my people in. I came here to war. And as believers, it is our responsibility to do the same thing. We are here to war. We are here to enjoy life, right? God doesn't want us to just be down here not enjoying life. But we also have a responsibility to save souls. We have a responsibility to grow the kingdom of God. And we should not take that lightly. We need to be on the offense, right? But what is the sword of the spirit? How do we use it? What does that even mean? So the sword of the spirit is the word of God. That is your weapon. This is the truth and it is your weapon. This is what you use to attack Satan. And Jesus gives us the most perfect example um, in Luke chapter 4 when so he had just gotten baptized, right? And the spirit, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness to be tempted. And so Jesus has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and Satan comes and he tempts him, right? And he tempts him and he says, um, he takes him to the highest point in the city and he says, I can make this whole world, I can make all of these kingdoms yours. And Jesus says, no, this is what the word of God says, right? Uh, Satan tempted Jesus with all of the authority and splendor um, and he can give it to anybody that he wants to and if Jesus just worshiped him he could give him all authority and Jesus answered no it is written in the word that we should worship the Lord your God and serve him only every time Satan tempted him every time Satan came against him he said no it is written God has said this that is how we use the sword of the spirit we attack Satan with the word we go after him each morning you wake up and you go after him with the word this is what god says god says that i am fearfully and wonderfully made god says that i am a city on a hill that cannot be hidden god says that i am the salt of the earth and the light of the world god says that i am his workmanship god says that i am his masterpiece god said that i am co-laborers with christ what did god say use that speak that that is your weapon that is your weapon. So now more than ever, we need believers who are willing to use their weapons. We need believers who are waking up every day, putting on the full armor of God, right? That is what we need now more than ever. That is what people need to see. And so that's why I felt like uh, Ephesians 6 was such a timely word for the state that we are in right now. Um, and I hope that you guys got something from this. Um, be sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. Um, and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.